Aubrey Pleasant let go yesterday, and uh, again, I, I get it. You have to be PC. You get handed a sheet from PR team saying this is probably the best thing to say. Aubrey Pleasant, respect him, love him as a guy, da 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 da. Uh, walk me through Dan Campbell yesterday, outside of really the dodging he gave on really why, because this fake accountability, uh, I'm not a fan of where every week it's my responsibility, yet it doesn't change week to week. And I just keep coming out and telling you, John, that it's my responsibility. We need to get better. Uh, where are we going with this? And how did it come to the, a decision that Aubrey Pleasant was let go when I could make the case maybe for a few others? Yeah, guys, let's take a step back. Remember, we were sold that the culture has been changed. What does that mean? Well, I would assume that the defensive backs could line up properly, that can look at the football and realize, oh, shoot, I should step back and not line up offsides. After the loss, I thought Dan Campbell gave a telling comment where he said the game plan was to be more physical against the talented Miami wide receivers and Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. You can't let them run free or what's going to happen. They're going to get into the teeth of your defense and they're going to cause havoc. Well, he comes out and says that he was frustrated that the defensive backs did not execute that. So I asked him, I said, how is that possible? How is it that an instruction is given and you're able to see that it's not happening and then it doesn't change throughout the course of the game? So I believe that there's been underlying issues with Aubrey Pleasant, the defensive backs. Amani Arawarie has taken, has taken a significant step back. So you look at this culture and you realize this coaching staff is tasked with getting these guys to execute and play at a higher level and the defense as a whole has been tragic and especially the defensive backs collectively it just was a complete mess and it was evident by what we saw where key third downs not only are you seeing these receivers open you're seeing them so wide open you and i could catch the ball and they're going up against tua who yes is a great quarterback and is emerging but i felt like you know dan campbell and the coaching staff felt the defense and the defensive backs especially could have performed at a high level. So I felt like, you know, the coaching staff needed to make a change at least to get a different voice trying to help improve the, the, the cornerbacks and the safeties. John, so you're the one who asked him, because I love the question, by the way, about not making those adjustments in the game, right? Because he, he seemed pretty choked up when you asked him that. I, I think you caught him off guard with that one. Well, here's the thing. When you come out and say, we have a game plan. And I also asked Aaron Glenn last week, what's the game plan? Because it was evident. The right. game plan, it was evident for Miami that Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell are going to be a big factor. And Aaron Glenn told me that the game plan was going to be be physical. Jam the receivers. Do not allow them to run free and have disrupt the timing a little bit so that they're not running open. So that was obviously instructed to these corners. How does that not happen? is a direct indictment of the poor coaching that's going on. And right. that's where I say I personally don't care if the players like Dan Campbell, if they are fond of him, if they want to have a beer with him. I personally care, do they follow instructions? Do they respect Dan Campbell? And right now, you got to take a serious look. When you're given a certain game plan and you don't follow it, what's going on here? Right. Right, and, and obviously the bigger picture, too. Like This team, besides one half against Washington and really Minnesota down the stretch, until down the stretch, they have yet to play a complete game, whether it's offensively, defensively. And if you just look at the last three games, they've been outscored 48-0, to zero, John. So kind of speak on that. Like the, the lack of adjustments, and not just defensively but offensively as well. Ben Johnson certainly deserves some of that blame. But how much of the blame is really on Dan Campbell at this point? I mean, we can start pointing the finger, but at the end of the day, you got to look at the CEO. Yeah, look, he's t he's under fire. He's obviously nobody's enjoying hearing him say we're close because, you know, four victories at this point in his tenure is unacceptable. But, I, I again, an indictment, how do you not put together consistently at least two quality halves of football? Look, I do believe that, you know, the, the look on offense was greatly improved in that first half. You had an opportunity to move the football. You were playing with aggression. So now you get into halftime. And obviously the Dolphins are going to make some adjustments. What is your counter move? That's a direct indictment of this coaching staff that there's no clear significant ability 
to adapt well enough in games. Miami makes some adjustments. And what does what what happens after Miami uh, has their first offensive scoring drive of the second half? The Lions come out and it's three consecutive penalties, shooting themselves in the foot. Dan Campbell told us that he's looking to reduce the mental errors by half. By half, that is ridiculous. It's a that lot. This football team is committing that many mental mistakes, missed assignments. So that indicates to me, guys, you guys, I, I, I'm very happy you pay attention to these media sessions, how is it that that was the performance in the second half when you've come out and said that the last two weeks, your practices have been more physical, they've been more crisp, everybody's paying attention. What do they pay attention to? You're you're not selling to this fan base that what you're doing is resonating with the players when they come out and they perform so poorly, make that many mistakes. And again, that photograph that we've seen now online with Amani Arawarie just looking at the football and not being able to recognize that he is lined up incorrectly is so damning and so unfortunate with this football team. It embodies what's going on. There is a lack of crispness that indicates to me that this is a well-coached team.